In this episode, after a quick intro to containers and images, we see how easy it is to run and connect to a containerized Nginx server. We then see how to stop, restart and remove the container. If you are new to Docker, you may want to know why there is so much hype around it. In the last five years, uh, this technology has disrupted the IT industry and the way of deploying software architectures. Docker and containers technology in general solves many problems for both developers and sysadmins. In short, with Docker we can package our application dependencies and binaries in what is called uh, a Docker image and we can use it across multiple environments without having to manage any dependency. We run our applications in Docker containers. They run isolated and they can run different versions uh, of the same application on the same machine, like two different versions of Nginx or Postgres, for example. If you haven't installed the Docker yet, it's really easy. In the resources section, you find the sites where you can download the Docker for Windows, Mac and Linux. It's now time to start our container. We use the Docker command, passing the container argument run and passing an option I'm going to describe in a second, p 8080 nginx. So nginx is the image of the service we want to run. To understand this option we need to consider that inside the container the nginx server opens the port 80. Containers are isolated and we can't connect directly to all the container ports. Instead we need to use the p option which is a shortcut for publish. Uh, and uh, uh, publish uh, a specific port. So what it does is actually to open the port 8000 in localhost and redirect all the connections uh, to the Nginx server inside the container that is accepting uh, connections on port 80. Great, so let's press enter and open a browser. And let's go to localhost 8000 and we see the default uh, Nginx index page. We also see that here on our terminal, the uh, logs, so what Docker does is to redirect to our terminal uh, the logs, so the standard error and standard output of uh, the uh, Nginx application. To stop the container, we can use uh, the control uh, C uh, keyboard combination or we can use another terminal. Uh, so to list the containers uh, we use ls command here. We see that our container has an ID and a randomly assigned name. We can use both uh, for uh, to refer uh, to, to the container. So to stop the container we use docker container stop and the container ID. We see that doing a docker container ls, uh, the container is not here anymore. And uh, if we do ls uh, a, which is means all, we see the container uh, that with the status uh, exited. So the normal ls command lists the active, uh, the running uh, uh, containers. We also see here in the other terminal that uh, the uh, container run command uh, has stopped. Let's clear the terminal and start again the container with the command docker container start and the ID of our container. After starting the container the docker command returns immediately without printing any log. To be able to see the log, we can use the logs command. So docker container logs and the ID of our container. Adding the F option, uh, the command doesn't return and waits for new log. We can see that if we go and we do multiple requests to localhost 8000 and we see that new logs is printed. Let's press a control C to exit uh, from the log command. And to remove our container, we need at first uh, to stop it. So 
we see that our container is still running. So we stop it. And now we can remove it. So container, RM, and the container ID. If we do now container ls all, there are no containers uh, in the list. We can also remove a container while it is running. So let's start again the container. And uh, use the other terminal to do a docker container rm for f for force. So it's like doing force f this container ID. We see that the uh, here the command is stopped, and if we do docker container ls uh, all, the container uh, is uh, uh, correctly removed. If you want to stay updated with new screencasts about Docker and software architectures, subscribe to the newsletter using the form below and subscribe to the YouTube channel.